in terms of the visual effects. I think that Bones is definitely one of those shows that should be proud of what they manage to pull off every episode. To have a team like that who always make us look good and tell the story in such a crisp, bright, beautiful way is pretty fantastic. You can't ask for more. They really are filmmakers. They're not just guys who do one small element of the production. They have to integrate their talents and their craft into the whole piece. And you don't even think about it when you see it because it sort of it goes so seamlessly with the story that it works. We use the visual effects a lot more because you know, it's a toy, you know, on one level to us. It's work to them, but, you know, we realize that we can do just about anything. It's amazing that, that you know, they're able to accomplish so much in such a short amount of time. When I first came to Bones, uh, my initial thoughts were, um, this stuff's crazy, it's gross, it's a bit morbid. But it was fun. Christian has come aboard the past few years um, to head the visual the effects team, so and he that. is extraordinary. You know, he can get away with a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's more yeah. than just random actions at that Yeah, point. great. Every show has its unique challenge, and every show, of course, they come up with, with something different. The whole group is, is remarkable, and Christian really has you know, led the charge. I think that collaboration has really helped take the visual effects to to a different um, a different level uh, the last couple seasons. You can always see the seams, and with Christian and and the look effects team, those seams are gone. So we can do just about, you know, really just about any anything. When we're first talking about the episode, and we're trying to kind of pinpoint what's going to be a visual effect, what's going to be a practical effect what we're gonna have to help enhance there. As we're going by this one body, the stomach explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! That body was awesome. First of all, Emily's reaction was hilarious with her get, being so excited about it blowing up, but that body was so, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely horrible and disgusting. On the day when we shot this, you know, we did have some goop, but uh, we always like to take it a little extra step further, and um, and that's what we're doing today. We knew that we would have to enhance this, and we knew that we would have to add certain elements after the fact, but we ultimately don't know all those things until the cut is done. And then once the cut is done, then we know specifically what angles that we need to, to match, and then we kind of plan according to that. So they have to shoot separately the body parts that are going to explode out of the stomach. Oh, the mother of all intestines. Here we go and lay that over the actual body. Action! We have a really fun team. The guys are great, good sense of humor. When we're working with this type of stuff, how, how can you not? I got it. So we shoot these elements against a green screen. Then we take those elements, and then we composite them into the shot. And then you can see here. <laughs> You rarely get to actually see a body rupture from distension. <laughs> As shooting these elements on green screen and this comping them, we were uh, able to come up with something that was uh, pretty disgusting. It's a process that requires different departments and a lot of um, a lot of computer work. Sometimes there's um, not the right location or it's not available, and then um, we'll try to try to make that location work. Some of those shows were not planned initially to be uh, heavy visual effects. Um, so the one we did that was the Jersey Shore um, uh, case, we went out to the beach and had um, Booth and Brennan walk up to a beach house. But it turned out to be a very, very cloudy day. You could barely see the ocean, and there was nothing behind them, and there were only a couple of people on the beach. When I looked at that, I realized it's really not gonna sell what we need to sell. So we asked Look Effects, we need the sky blue, we need a lot of people on the beach playing ball, you know, beach umbrellas, walking by, walking in the foreground in bathing suits. And we'd like to put a big pier with rides and attractions, you know, in the distance. This was a pretty challenging shot. They, they weren't prepared for a lot of the things that were supposed to happen to it. We basically got a shot which looked like this, completely gloomy, overcast beach. 
So basically what you wind up doing is you break up your, your 2D shot into a bunch of 3D, what, they're, uh, what are called cards. So you can see we've pretty much got a ton of individual elements that we've placed in 3D space. So from all of these original green screen shots, we layered in, I think, close to 20 new extras. And it wasn't originally supposed to be an effect shot, so they weren't thinking about, obviously, having the huge set piece in the background. But I think it turned out really well. It was remarkable. And that was something that we decided to do at the last minute. What I love about Christian is along the way, through the entire process, he will chime in. So maybe you could give him a hand signal, maybe when he's getting too close, where he might be cutting frame. When we approach a visual effects scene, if it's very involved, we will storyboard. What they had asked us to do for the finder is create an entire underwater sequence. The final resting place of the Spanish treasure ship Santa Esperanza. Originally, there was a lot of conversation during the pre-production phase of the finder. Can we do this practically? There was just no way to do it. So ultimately, it was decided that Christian and his crew would create that ship in 3D. But that's very difficult to do, because water is very difficult to do. And then constructing an entire ship um, digitally is really um, a challenge. So I started building the um, ship according to the storyboard, tried to make it as old as I could. Later, we started adding plants and, uh, and uh, corals, everything that we needed to make the scene more realistic. And I'm very proud of it. On Bones, um, as far as visual effects are concerned, it's kind of broken down into a couple different categories. The first being 3D work. I'll give you an example. We needed um, butterflies in this entire sequence. And um, to get a butterfly wrangler was definitely not an option. It was uh, pre-planned that Christian would create the 3D butterflies. And then his team executed very realistic looking butterflies. <laughs> The butterflies were coming in and eating a body, and and uh, we had to kind of react to these butterflies being around. Probably just attracted by the remains. Whoa, 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 butterflies eat dead people? Yeah. One of them even landed on David's shoulder, and there were no butterflies. I mean, we weren't working with anything, and, and that they can even just in a simple sense, like, you know, add something that just colors the scene fully is, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's definitely a talent, and, and they have it. Another category that we do is score enhancement. The Jaegers do a great job with the bodies that we have on Bones, and often they'll ask us to just enhance the things that they already provide and that they already do. Um, just make them a little bit more gross, make them Bones. But there's not a whole lot that we have to improve on what they do. They do a great job. The main category that, uh, that we're often asked to do for Bones is set extensions. We shoot here in Los Angeles, and obviously Bones takes place in Washington, D.C. So. We have to make it feel like we're in D.C. And, and make the audience believe that we're there. I know, isn't that amazing? I mean, yeah, in six years, I've not stepped foot in Washington, D.C., and yet I feel like I kind of work there. When Booth uh, uh, proposes to Hannah, that was in front of the Lincoln Memorial, which I don't really think was even there. We do move the monuments of Washington, D.C. around frequently. It makes a lot of the shots look better. And if you can pick the Washington Monument up and move it across town next to the Capitol or something like that, it makes the shot look nicer, even though we're, we're totally messing with the geography of our nation's capital. But, you know, if you can't do that in a computer, what's the computer for? As long as you don't know that, uh, that it's not there, then we've done our job. It's funny because a lot of times Christian is so good that I don't even know what is real and what is not real. I mean, I know that the blizzard was not real, but being from back east, I know that that did look very real. I mean, there's always been so many cool bug effects and like, I think the cats in one episode were, wasn't when there cats? There were cats at some point. The production value is really good on the show. I'm not just saying all of these nice things because I'm being taped right now. <laughs> we did another episode this year, which was a combination of a cougar cruise and finding the remains of a victim on a slave ship. That was going to take place in a grand hall, a great exhibit hall um, at the Jeffersonian. Well, that didn't exist. There was no hall, there was no boat, there was nothing. There was um, Tamara Taylor, who plays Cam, standing in front of a podium and in front of a green screen. And then behind her, that green screen became this beautiful section of the museum 
with the boat. They just built a virtual museum and it was absolutely seamless. And the other one was the killing of the gravedigger, this uh, serial killer we had on the show. Oh my God, oh my God, that's the one I want to talk about. The bullet in the brain where the gravedigger's head gets, literally, I rewound that like four times. It was unbelievable. That was unreal. First of all, I couldn't believe that they managed to put that on television. Uh, and secondly, it, it looked it looked really disturbing. It was it was really intense. You you almost forget for a second that it's all fake. To our artist Yuli, who made the Gravedigger's head explode, to Ben, who created Jersey Shore, really just a great team of artists as well who who help provide the elements that we need to help make Bones' visual effects the way it is. It's really exciting to kind of see what they came up with, and yeah, it's always a surprise. I find myself sitting on the couch going, whoa, that's amazing. We hope to continue to be able to do more, uh, more things uh, in the future for Bones.